What is going on guys, DBG here. Today we are going to be going over the top 100 players in NBA 2K22, my team lads. So, this is all going to be my opinion and also this is as of today, the 31st of January. I hope to get this video up today. I'm currently recording this, it's half nine my time, so like 4.30 Eastern time. They may or may not come out with a leak. Yeah, so in 30 minutes, there may or may not be a leak for moments of the month. And if there is a leak for the moments of the month, obviously we're straight on to that. And this video will be probably out on Wednesday. So this video is either going to be out today on 31st of January or Wednesday, the 2nd of February, either or. So um, none of the cards, if it is out on Wednesday, none of the cards from moments of the month will be in this. So to make that clear, so none of the moments of the month cards will be in this if it is delayed or if it's out on uh, Monday. It's not, um, like most of one hasn't even happened yet. So, anyway, now we are going to get on to it. At number 100, we've got a card that I'm high on, but, like, this is the standard of cards we have this year, and it's Kyrie Irving Pink Diamond. So, Kyrie Irving Pink Diamond, this one specifically. 6'3", 6'4", wingspan, 11 halves. If you look at his halves, like, the guy's got Chef, the guy's got, um, range or limitless spot up like he has no flaws he really really has no flaws honestly um except for his donkey and the layup package is a bit bad like the Kyrie Irving layup package he will just be thrown in the odd 360 layup and which will get swatted into rosette so like that's not an ideal situation but at the end of the day it could be it could be worse so He's fast, he dribbles well, he's got a decent shot, he shoots the ball from deep. And defensively, I mean, he gets interceptor, he gets clamps. So the reason why he's 100, I'm just not the biggest fan of that release. I don't think he's bad. I really don't think he's bad at all. So I know a lot of people aren't particularly high on the guy, but I mean, I think he's perfectly, perfectly fine. Um, and he's going in at number 100. That just shows again just how good this list is and at number 99 we've got Kevin McHale so we're gonna put Kevin McHale in here at 99 eight Hall of Fame badges his defense all right but the 55 steals kind of killer I don't even mind Seshaw 3 I don't think Seshaw 3 is great by the way like anyone saying that like I think Seshaw 3 is the best release in the world I really don't I think Seshaw 3 is not one of the worst releases I think it's a usable release I don't think it's good but something about his upper his up with Sasha 3. Like, at this stage in the game, 82 speed's all right for center. His interior defense is okay. Like, he's not going to be a good defender. He's not going to shoot that well. He's 6'10". I get it. He's got the gigantic wingspan, but still. Skinny player build. I don't know. I'm just not high. I'm just not that high on him compared to how, where a lot of other people are on him. 98. Going Duncan. So, Duncan plays defense at an elite rate. Like, his badges are nice. His speed's not great. 81. His three ball is really weak, in my opinion. And anytime I've used Duncan, I've just not really liked him. It's probably not probably as it is because of his release. Um, and I'm just not high. I know a lot of people again are think he's pretty good, but for me, it doesn't dribble at all. There's just so many better players. 97. We got Nat. And again, this is um, this is a really weird one because. Calvin Nat, you could definitely argue should be higher. You could definitely, definitely argue that Calvin Nat should be higher. Um, but I just haven't had any success with the guy. I really haven't. Like, he's one of those where I'm like, I really should like this card. There's no reason why Calvin Nat should not be one of my one of my like preferred cards, but like he's not even not even close to it, in my opinion. And in my opinion, this guy is better than Calvin Nat. Like you look at Calvin and you're thinking, okay, he's actually a decent shooter. His stats are brilliant. His defense badge, he's got all of them on gold. His hot pads are all finishing. Just the base dribble style, not great release. I get it. Someone like Splash has a lot of strength, has a lot of um, success with the guy. Um, for me, not really. Then we've got Antonio McDice, one spot ahead of him. Antonio McDice is at number um, 90. Where is it? 90. Six, yeah, he's um just in general a very very good card. So McDice, he's got gold interceptor, gold posting lockdown, a lot of good finishing badges. His release makes up for the fact that he's only got 73 ball, 
and his strength and stuff is really good. His all around game, he just feels a little bit better than me. Maybe it's because he's three inches bigger than um, Kevin Nash. Really, really good. And then at number 96, or say 95, we're gonna go with Pink Diamond, Damian Lillard. So PD Dame, honestly, is, he's a player that I'm a fan of. I really am a fan of this card, but I'm like, is he unbelievably good? Not really, his offense is fantastic. His offense is absolutely fantastic, lads. So, I'll put him here. But, like 95 is probably the correct spot for him. I think it's tough. It's it's tough because he doesn't play defense, but he's so good in offense. Like he's got range extender. He's got his own release on quick. Um, his dribble style is good. So, again, a really, really nice card here who is going in to this list at number 95. So, at number 94, we got Iverson. I think Iverson's just better. I think Alan Iverson is very like PD Dame. Initially, I thought Dame was better than Iverson. Iverson's better than Dame. Iverson, get with that half ball stripper badge, he can sometimes get steals on defense. He plays, they're very similar in offense, whereas Iverson can get steals on defense, whereas Damian Lillard can't, which is, again, like a very, very, it's kind of a big thing, honestly. Um, but again, he's tiny. He's, he's tiny, so I can't put him higher than 94. Like he's going to play defense. He's going to dunk. He's just overall good. Number 93, we got Nick Batum. Again, I will mention what numbers everyone are before the player. So um, if you guys do miss out on player, because I did forget to put the numbers on the top of the screen, um, it's gonna that would add an extra good old hour, hour and a half onto editing. So I've completely missed out on that. So I do apologize. Um, not putting it on or not putting a clicker on screen so um it will be next time we do this list there will be a counter on screen but i will make sure to say it very clearly what players are what position but batum he does everything well and he's got like half bullet he's got half dimer half needle threader i think the big thing with nick batum that a lot of people don't realize is i, I don't even like he's got that interceptor he's um got that base 40 but he's got the Pro 3, which is not as good as it used to be, but it's still a really effective behind the back if you know what you're doing. It really is. So Nick Batum, I think 93 is a completely fair spot for him. I think any higher than 93 and you're like, yeah, that's probably overkill, especially for a card that's as old as he is. But I think at 93, 93, we're in, we're in around the right area for this guy. At number 92, we've got Dave Cowens. So Cowens is just solid. Like defensively, Cowens is fine. Like in all 90s, all 80s, three-point shot. He actually will hit when he's wide open because base one's really good. Fundamental dribble stop, terrible ball handle. I just think he's supremely overrated. I think he's not the greatest shooter. I think he's not the greatest perimeter defender. I think interior, he's going to get beaten a little bit because he's small. I think he's fine. I think he's just absolutely fine. 92, I think, is a fair spot for him. And 91, now this might be gassing it, but I'm putting Eddie Jones. I'm going to put Eddie Jones in at 91. Like, Eddie Jones, still, to this day, like, base 31 is chicken. Um, 94 three-pointer. 85 uh, driving dunk is insane. Like, 90, 94 lateral, 90 speed, 90 acceleration. He's got everything except range. Honestly, he's got everything except range, and he's got half interceptor for, uh, for a perimeter defender. He doesn't have ball stripper, but we can give it to him. Um, He's really good. Like, he's very, very good. I think he's probably stood the test of time better than this guy right here. We have one spot higher than him at um, number 89 and is Jay Rich. So Jay Rich is good. Jay Rich is genuinely, genuinely good, lads. So him in here at number 91. I mean, maybe. Or say him here and here at number 89. I mean, maybe you can argue that because his stats are brilliant. His stats are absolutely brilliant, lads. So, I think he's... The difference is that, again, only goal in the scepter. He's not going to defend anywhere near as well. I don't like power dribble style. He's not going to defend nearly as well as... Um, he, he's a better offensive, worse defensive um, Eddie Jones. That's the best way I can describe him. 
Better offensive, worse defensive, um, Eddie Jones. Then at number 80, or say no, number nine, say Jay Rich is 90. Number 89 is Clyde Drexler. Oh, I've already messed up. I've already messed up my reading list. But Clyde Drexler, you might think, okay, he's nowhere near as good as Jay Rich. I think when you put, base dribble style is better than power for me. Some people prefer power to base. I actually don't mind base dribble style that much. It's a weird one because of the way you can't get any right stick bursts, but in transition, if you're just changing direction when using the left stick, you can actually get some really good bursts of base. Um, sniper on gold, you give the guy range extender. He's still got gold in the scepter. He's got a, a way better player build than Jay Rich. And I prefer his dunk animations and I really like base five. So yeah, he's going in here number 89. And number 88, we got Marcus Smart. Still really good. Marcus Smart to this day is really good. Like, good three-pointer, can shoot from deep, um, can burst 89, or he's got clamps, he's got like 89 speed, which is not the greatest, but it's not bad either. 95 laterals, really good, driving dunks, decent, and the only problem is he got low ball handle. If he had 86 ball handle, this guy would be so good, and if he had handles for days. He can sure you can give him handles for days if you want. This guy, like, we all know in Qualifier 2, RCA literally ran a juiced up version of this guy, and he was insane. So, um, yeah, he's going to go there. Then at number 87, we're going to go with Cunningham. We are going to go with Billy Cunningham, lads. So Billy Cunningham, I'm not high on him, but I'm also, also don't think he's bad. Again, a lot of people, um, a lot of people when it comes to Billy Cunningham are either really high or really low on him. I think he's okay at small forward. He's got a wide player build. He's like, imagine a smaller Blake Griffin you could play a small forward. But he's got better stats. Like if you get Blake, if Blake Griffin had these stats, we'd be looking and these stats and badges, we'd be looking at one of the best centers in the game. But he'll hit shots, his release is smooth. He's got 90 lateral, 88 steel, which is good, 97 driving dunk, which is really, really nice. Um a lot of his scoring badges are interior, which isn't great. And then defensively, he's solid. He's not unbelievable on defense, he is solid. So we gotta actually kind of rush through this a little bit. Um then at number 86, we got Wall. The fact that John Wall at this stage in the game is 86, it just shows how great just my team players are. Like, Wall is almost perfect, except for the fact he's base dribble style, which, again, I don't even mind that much. Wall's release is good. Wall feels like he shoots way better than he does. Like, Wall's three-point rating is 90, and he only has um, bronze range extender. But, like, from using Wall, Wall genuinely shoots the ball from really deep. Like, over the Christmas break, I was using John Wall... And like he was my starting point guard until, honestly, until Baron Davis. Until the start of the season, which was, what was it, two and a half weeks ago? John Wall was my starting point guard. And I still buy that. Like, I genuinely think he belonged there because his defense is really nice. Even though badges wise, it may not be the greatest with only gold badges, he's got really good tendencies. And for me, John Wall versus like Gary Payton, Pink Diamonds at a base. But it just shows like, it is so close. I'm just putting it out this, putting it here right now, or putting it out there. It is so close between like 45 and 80 on this list. It's so close. Um, then we have got at number 85, we have got Doug West. So again, Doug West is a really, really solid card. Like, he's gonna shoot the ball well. He's got really good animations. That's the thing, like, He's just kind of one of these really, really underrated players that... He's just one of these really underrated players that not a lot of people have because he's token word. He's got shifty dribble style, base 107 on quick, good behind the back. He's got really good ratings, decent defense, decent defense badges. He doesn't need interceptor, he doesn't need range, he isn't complete. But like when you can, when you give him all his badges, I'm telling you, the guy is, the guy is fantastic. Once he ends up getting all of his badges, the guy is absolutely fantastic. And well, well worth his spot on this list. At number... Where is he? He is number... 85. At number 84, we're going to go with Jonathan Isaac. And this, this is a really tough one. Because I think these are close, but... I still think Jonathan Isaac at the small forward position because he's 6'11 can be really effective. Like, we've all kind of moved past Jonathan Isaac, but anytime I use him, I'm like, kind of forget him. Like, this guy's still that dude. Like, he's got all the gold defensive badges. I know he's a sapphire. 
I know he's a staff fire, and I might. I think he belongs on the list. I think you can definitely argue Nat over him. You can argue a lot of guys. You can argue Batum over him. And it's a weird one. Like, I preferred at the time Batum to Jonathan Isaac, but the more I use Isaac, the more I'm like, yeah, this card is actually pretty damn good. This card is pretty good. And, like, over time, Isaac is, is clear on the likes of... I think it's some similar guys to Jonathan Isaac that... I think he's clear on Batum. I think he really is. I think it's just... It's just the height matters so much at that small four position. And you can be you can use really, really effective lineups using Jonathan Isaac. So he's in here at 83. Number 82, we have got Honda. So John Havlicek is again, John Havlicek is a really good card. So the big thing with Hondo for me is that he's not Hondo of last year. And I think people have kind of, including myself, that were really we really underrated Hondo because he was not last year's Hondo. And we were all like super excited, especially when we saw this picture. They use the same picture as they used for last year's Honda. But um, the difference is that this guy is just a cone. He is well and truly just a cone. Like he's got decent speed, but he's got a good three ball. Base 17, which is his release, is actually pretty nice. Um, and you can't really complain. Like defensively, he's fantastic. He's not going to dunk. But defensively, he's absolutely fantastic. He's got half clamps. He's got half hustler, half menace. Um, half tireless defender. So... I really, I really think he's not going to create. Obviously, this is not John Havlicek last year. I mean, Kazi is just this year's Honda. Kazi Russell is, lit, is genuinely just this year's John John Havlicek. As in, like, the guy that's just going to be the best shot creator in the game, except shot creating isn't really a thing. But um, Hondo, I think, belongs here at A2. At number 81, we got Jaron Jackson Jr. I still rate this guy. I still think this guy's good. Like, looking at his stats... If he had if he had a better than a 45 steal, I think everyone would be super super high on him. He's way better on current gen than he is on next. I just want to make that one clear. Like he's fine on next gen. He's so good on current gen. Um Badges wise, nearly perfect. Stats wise, percent here. He was perfect. He's got a big player build, block shots. Release is okay. Telling you. He's a good, good card. Number 80, we got Buggy. We got Buggy Cousins. So DeMarcus Cousins, again, just overall, he's fine. He has that wide player build, so he does set big screens. Good three ball. Defensively, he's mediocre. He's good in the post. I mean, some people are really high on Buggy. I think he's okay. Like, okay is the only word I can use to describe DeMarcus Cousins. So, yeah, he's in here. At number 79, we've got the, um, the controversial pick of Carlos Boozer. Like, yeah, he, he doesn't come with a lot of... He does not come with a lot of badges. But if you're looking at, like, shooting badges, comes a catch to your corner special screen machine, also out there, set shooter. Do you want him to have dead... Any range? Do you want him to have dead eye? Yeah. Chef genuinely does not matter for him. I'm being dead honest. Like, Chef does not matter in the slightest for him. Um, rebound chase is really good. Interceptor is good. Brick wall, hustler, pogo, post move lockdown. Like, the only badges... I wish he had Intimidator. I really wish he had Intimidator. But for me, his speed, if he had 80 speed, people would be going crazy with this card. He's one of the best shooting bigs in the game. I love this release with this upper. is so good. Um, his defense is not good. It's not terrible either. And he's really good in the post. Like, I've used this guy a few times. He's been really, really good for me. Um, and for me, he's been better than any time he's Buggy or Jaron Jackson Jr. Heck, I was I sold Jaron Jackson Jr. And replaced, sure, I replaced Jaron Jackson Jr. with John Collins. And I replaced John Collins with Boozer. For the, and they were all around the same price. I thought Boozer was better. So he's going in here. We got Blake Griffin. I think Blake is slightly better. I think Blake is ever so slightly better than Boozer. I think Blake's just Boozer, but he can dunk better. Like, he's got downhill glue hands, anchor braces, um, go quick first step, gold sniper. He's got rise up posterizer, drop step or back down punisher, limitless takeoff. Like, he's going to dunk the ball well. He's got a smooth release. Power dribble style is not great, but I think Blake is just... Blake is good. Then number 77, we got Baron Davis. He For me, he's just better John Wall. So he needs like limitless spot up. He needs Chef. And he comes with base dribble style. But I really like his defense. He's got terrible interior defense. But um, so if you are playing... Especially if you're playing this game competitively, look, you're probably not going to use Baron Davis because what will end up happening is that you will literally just get your head. You'll just get mashed in. You'll get your head mashed in. It is what it is, like, but if you're playing 
And the worst thing is, I will say, oh, if you're just playing against an, an, the average player, and not even the average player, a well above average player, like, you're going to be fine. He's really good in clutch time. He's really good in TTO. Like, it's just, if a player knows how to abuse the lack of interior defense, you're going to struggle. But again, he's got a high enough block rating that he can kind of make up for that. So, he is a player that I like. His speed, speed ball and acceleration, he moves so fast. I don't care about base dribble stuff. Like, normally, I would normally I would say, oh, these base dribble style guys feel slow. He moves so much faster than John Wall. He's got half interceptor. He's a guy that has been in and around my team since I got him. The only thing is that, like, I've used him a lot in clutch time, and he's been brilliant. I just haven't played much Unlimited. And, like, if I was playing in competitive tournaments, I would consider running him as my point guard. Like, I would strongly, strongly consider. I don't know who I would run if I was playing comp, but I would definitely, definitely at least consider running Baron Davis. So, um, after Baron Davis, we have got Brooke Lopez. One of the more underrated centers in the game. 70 speed is his problem. Like, the problem is the speed. Like, I will admit it, the guy's not fast. But everything else, his interior defense is brilliant. His shot blocking ability is brilliant. His release is so good. As far as shooting bigs go, purely just shooting wise, he has to be up there with the best of them. A goal range extender. He's got like rim, brick wall, intimidator, box. So he's he's got all the badges to be a good interior. It's just he's not going to do much in the perimeter, which is fine. Um, he's just slow. He's just slow. So if you if you play play a game at a fast pace, he's gonna be really bad. But if you play the game at a slow pace, I know a lot of people have messaged me saying that Brook Lopez I think is the best center in the game. I don't think he is, but I think he's good. Then we've got next Magic Johnson. And this is again, if he suits your play style, this is one of the things I hate with like something like card like this, because like if he suits your play style, he's way higher than 75. And if he doesn't suit your play style, he shouldn't be on the list at all. So I just had to find a spot to put him. He's really awkward because, like, if Magic suits your playstyle, he might be a top two point guard in my team. But if Magic doesn't suit your playstyle, just don't consider using him. The guy's six foot nine. Stats wise, I mean, they're all right, aren't they? Defensively, he's fine. Shooting wise, he's fine. Obviously, Magic Johnson on normal timing. Um, isn't probably the greatest release. Oh, not isn't the greatest release. Isn't a good release in the slightest. But um, he could be worse. He could be a lot worse. And I said it when he came out that I, I thought that everyone thought it was like this is going to be Magic Johnson's year. I knew it with the way his movement is, um, he wasn't going to be great. The funny thing is that people are like, oh, it's his dribble style. It's not his dribble style. He can actually burst out. The guy doesn't run. It's his running animations. I don't know what they've done with Magic Johnson. And it was it's happened to like Hakeem and Kat or in other years where players just he just can't run. Then number seventy four, we've got Carmelo Anthony. I think it's it's just a pure just sharp. He's still brilliant. I think he's absolutely brilliant as a uh, as a pure sharpshooter. So um, yeah, like he's not, but he plays way better defense. His stats would suggest he shoots the ball better than his stats would suggest. He's just really good. Maybe it's just comfortability factor with him, but um, yeah, I think he's good. I think the card is good. And number seventy three, we got Paul George. Um, Paul George, he's got again, he's got sixty base badges. Some of them are silver. Um, some of them are bronze. He gets good uh, burst animations with Paul George dribble style. Don't like his buying in the back. His release is pretty good. His defense is good. 92 steals really, really nice as well. And I don't know what it is with Paul George. Like, I kind of shoot well with Paul George. I just don't like the card. Like, I'm sorry. Like, it's it's really hard. It's a weird one to explain because I should like him. Because I love Lamar Odom, by the way. And Lamar Odom is very similar to Paul George. There's just something about this card that I don't like. And, like... You might people are saying, oh, but sure, like he's just expensive. Like, no, no, like he was 30k. He was 30k over Christmas. If I really wanted Paul George, I would have I would have had a Paul George. I just never it was just something about the card. He I just never got on with it. I just never got on with the card, so just it's a weird one that he's probably a little bit lower for me than he is for most people. Because I will say this now, I prefer this guy to Paul George. Andre Master Andre Karolenko. I think AK's defense is immaculate. He's not gonna dunk the he's not gonna ever dunk the ball. I really, but he will hit shots. I really like that base 29. Especially for low three 29 is one of my favorite for low three-point shooters or low rated three-point guys or people with no badges. I think it works really well. I think just in general, the guy is just in general, the guy is an unbelievable defender. He's got somewhat decent playmaking badges. He's got like clamps, pogo, tireless defender, like on half. 
So he's going to be a brilliant defender who's going to be okay at other things. And yeah, are there better players you can get in the game right now than him? Of course. Can you get like better players for cheap than him? Of course. But I do think he still belongs somewhere on the list. I'm going to put him at 72. At 71, we've got Paul Silas. The fake Paul Silas. I mean, he's got Draymond. He's, he's basically very smaller than Reese Lucas. Defensively immaculate. Um, half interceptor, great defensive badges. Shooting-wise, you got to give him some badges. But Shifty, Scotty, jump shot 12. He's brilliant. He's like small. He is the smaller Paul Silas. And again, the fact that he is down here at number 71. Say not Paul Silas. Smaller than Marie Zeus. In fact, he's down at 71. Just shows how good this list is. And then number 70. I know, Ty, if you're reacting to this, I love Tony. I really like this Tony Kuko chat. I'm a big, big fan of this Kuko chat. I think his movement is top quality. I think um, he's got range. He's got a lot of good things going for him. Um, I don't think he's obviously not Lamar Odom good. He's not. And I think he may, like, if you want to argue that Paul George is better than him, I'm fine with that. But, like, for me, he, I love Brook Lopez base. I think his overall stats are brilliant. I think I like fundamental dribble style. Um, he's got corner specialist as well and half. Like, he's, anytime I've used him, he hasn't missed. So, I can just have to judge him by that. Like, the guy does not miss very often in game. So, um, he doesn't miss. He moves well. He's actually a really solid defender. The guy comes with 56 base badges. Six in him on half and 50 on gold. Yeah, Ku Coach is really, really nice. And he's going in here at 70. At 69, we've got Draymond Green. So Draymond Green, i probably go with this one because he's got half dimer. But Draymond Green, you're looking, stats-wise, he looks fine. He looks fine, but it's just the kind of the animation. He's got that Scotty behind the back, which allows him to move quite well on offense. He's got that base 12, which is one of the better releases in all of my team. So for me, like his defense is really good. Um, he shoots the ball well. Like, I know for a fact that there are people still using this guy competitively for quite a while. And again, you, you cannot argue with a 25,000 MT card that could probably still to this day be used competitively. Um, and then we have got at number 69, Julius Irving. We've got Julius Irving in here at 69. Shooter. Uh, his defense... The weird thing is that his defense and his movement and his dunking, it's hard to get it's hard to get him into position to dunk. But I'm telling you, the guy shoots. If you're asking me how to describe him, it would be shooter. We gotta get through these quicker. And at number 68, we have got I'm oh, sorry, at number 68 was Dr. J. And number 67 was Bailey Howe. I don't think I've got DeRozan on this list. I do not actually think I put DeRozan on this list. DeRozan will be in and around this range as well. But Bailey held 32 at 10 halves. He's got 86 speed, 86 acceleration, 79 three ball, but an easy release to green. Shifty dribble style. Um, he's an 83 ball handle. No quick first step, which is a little bit annoying. He gives a half rebound chaser, half interceptor. Ridiculously a rebounding stats. Brilliant defensive stats. This guy is one of the most underrated cards in the game. Play him a small forward, play him a power forward. He's going to do a job. Um, and he's well worth his spot in here at number 67. Number 66, we got Miles. So this guy should not be this good. I'm going to make that clear. This card should not be this good, but he is. Like, you're looking, you're thinking some of the weaker stats you've seen. Something about his player build. He's got quick first step on half. He's got all a lot most of the goal defensive eyes on half. Doesn't have limits. Doesn't have sniper. I like his release. I don't know what it is. I think it's something about his player build. He's fantastic for me. Every single time I use... Darius Miles, I'm, I'm happy that I used him. Um, I was a huge fan of this Ruby when he came out. And then this card right here is significantly better. Significantly, significantly better. So he is in here at number 66. And number 65, we got Dolph. We got the Dolph man himself. So Dolph Shays, especially master version, is really good. Like, he's not going to move with the ball in his hand because the dribble stop, especially on next gen. On current gen, he'll move fine. Base 38 and quick is such a good release. He's got really, really good shooting badges. He's got range extender. He's actually a pretty good defender. Not great perimeter defense, but sure, look, it is what it is. Uh, great rebounding, half rebound chaser. Play the guy at the four. 
like you, again, you're still seeing guys running this guy competitively. Dolph is a brilliant in game. Dolph is absolutely brilliant in game. At number 64, we got Wiggins. A six foot eight two guard who plays great defense. He's gonna he's fast, he's gonna dunk sometimes, but his main thing is his defense. So um I think just in general, a really, really good card. And interceptor, great defender. Um I think I bought mine for 40, I sold mine for 40 as well, and he went down I think to like 10, 15, and at that price you can't go wrong with him. Number 63, we got Diamond Harden. James Harden is just like this card came in 24th of November. It's been a while, but Harden is going to be good this year. I don't care why anyone says Harden will be good this year. The guy's got a good three ball. Um, his release is so green. I can't wait to see it. What that release like? I'm quick. His dribble style, his dunking, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Like, like you wouldn't think looking at this card and this ba these badges that he'd be as good as he is, but he is. Harden's really good, and I'm not even going to lie, this Harden's still a beast. This Flash Harden, you could still get away with using Flash Harden that came out on the 8th of November, 8th of October. Like, obviously, like this card is quite a bit better, but you can still get away with using Flash Harden, which is mental. Um, then, after James Harden, we have got Michael Red. Any cards that I don't really care about, I'll go over quick. He is basically Dr. J, so better, slightly better defense, slightly worse donkey. He, that's basically what you're getting, Michael Red. Um... After Michael Red, we have got Opal Steph Curry. Now, this card could be way... If he suits your playstyle, just like Magic Johnson, he's going to be way higher for you. And if he doesn't suit your playstyle, he's going to not be on the list. The guy doesn't play defense. He can create. He gets the Curry slide. He's going to sometimes make a dunk. Um, his defense is... Stats-wise, looks okay, but it's not. It's really not. The guy does not play defense. So, um, yeah. We have got Stephen Curry in at number 61. At number 60, we have got Diamond Mike Miller. So Diamond Mike, like again, Mike Miller is a freaking six foot eight two guard with unbelievable speed, unbelievable dunk, and half range extender. Like if you can somehow find a way to get the guy interceptor, that's all you really need. I mean, maybe you want to give him handles for days, but a brilliant card. Like base 22, shifty dribble style. If he's released a bit faster, he'd be higher, but nah, Mike Miller is still that dude. Then number 59, we got George Mikan. Like, I still rate George Mikan so highly. I still rate him. Like, fundamental dribble style. Um, he's got sniper. He's got most of the key defense badges other than interceptor. His stats are still pretty good, and his release is so nice. He's just a card that I'm always going to be a huge fan of him. My team, like, if we manage to get a better George Mikan, I'm telling you. We got a better mic, and he could be one of the best. Um, he could be one of the best players in the game. Honestly, just the way, just Mikan's player build, Mikan's ability to hit jumpers, um, that release in base four could be huge, especially with how easy his upper is to green. He could end up being a superb, superb card. So, after that, to realize I only have about 40 minutes left to make the rest of this video, and he, we are currently at number... And uh, it does not appear like there's going to be a leak. So we may not even see moments in the month tomorrow, which will be a bit of a disaster. Um, then we've got Arvidas Savonis. Now, again, this is another one. The way I play the game, I would prefer him to a Yao, but I know most people prefer Yao to him. 7-3, long wingspan, wide player build. He's got not great lateral quickness, but he can shoot the lights out. Um, his passing is good. He's 7-3. He's a 7-3 giant who's actually pretty freaking good in game. Then at number 57, we got Jimmy Butler, Pink Diamond. So Jimmy Bucket's Pink Diamond. Base 22, slow enough release, but it's green. Um, no, can't get range. Fantastic defender. 80 driving down, which is not great, but he's got comes with like eight half defensive badges, which is again really good. Was a good card when he came in, not an unbelievable card when he came, or he was an unbelievable card when he came in, not an unbelievable card now. Be so many guys have got similar defensive badges, but I still think he is well worth a spot at 57. 56, we got Tracy McGrady. And this T-Max not very good. Or he's not unbelievable. Like, he can still shoot the ball. He's still a 6'8", 2 guard. He still plays, lane, plays lanes well and has a great release. I mean, we need a better T-Mac. We need a better T-Mac soon. I would not be that surprised to see T-Mac coming on Friday. But we definitely need a better T-Mac soon. Then we got Jalen Brown, Pink Diamond. I just think it's better. Like, 92 speed, 92 acceleration, 91 three ball. 
um, 94 lateral, 90 driving dog, every that matters he has. His playmaking badges are oh, pretty decent. He's got, in terms of cone badges, they're perfect. Defensively, he's good. I like it. He's like dribble style, which isn't great, but I like that base 75 release. So yeah, Jalen Brown is coming in here at number 70. What's that? One we're talking about 70, number 55. Number 54, we got Ben Gordon. Ben Gordon's a brilliant card. He's actually a brilliant, brilliant card. Like, I think I maybe I'm underrating him. But his defense is meh. Like, he's got not the greatest block, but he's got okay interior. His ladder quickness and stuff are not great. He comes with most of the key defensive badges. But in like menace. But half quick for step, half quick chain, half downhill. Um, he comes with like gold range. He comes with a lot of other things. I don't know why my mouse is lagging. There we go, it's back. But um, quick dribble style. Um, base 22 on quick, which is such a good release. He's the only base 22 player on quick. He was my starting point guard for a while. He's brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. At number 53, we got Opal Jordan. Like, the guy's fine. The guy's absolutely fine. Are there better budget options for than him? Yeah, is he terrible value? Yeah, but he's, he's good. He is good. 95 speed, 95 acceleration, 96 uh, mid, 86 three ball, 96 lateral, 95 driving dunk, 95 steal, 94 speed of ball, half sniper, rhythm shooter, difficult shots, bullet, downhill, glue hands, handles for days, hyper drive, needle thread, a quick chain, quick first step, as well as ball stripper, clamps, receptor, intimidator, menace, pickpocket, tires, defender. I mean... He's pretty freaking good. He looks like a pretty freaking good card. Like, uh, behind, Dame Lillard behind the back as well. Like, the only problem is, is that he's just, he's really good. He's just not great. That's the problem, is that like, he's, there are just better options than him. He's not a bad card, there are just better options than Michael Jordan. There really are just better options than MJ. Um, Number 52, we got Donovan Mitchell. So Donovan Mitchell, I know he's six foot one, but let's because of his wingspan, let's just say he's six three. So um he's got a really nice player build. Thing is though, like in the right hands, Mitchell's unbelievable. Shifty dribble style, decent behind the back. He's got base four, which is a good release. Good three ball, good speed, really, really nice defense, really good interior and block as well for someone his size. Half clamps, half quick for his step, like gold range extender. I'm telling you, is this is a really nice card. Is he like god tier? I don't think so. But I like him. I think Donovan Mitchell is a really, really solid card. And I think that he can be super effective, especially coming up with those 65 base badges. Number 52, we got Worthy. Or number 51, we got James Worthy. He's just not complete. And James Worthy has got, like, Interceptor. He can shoot the ball kind of well. His release takes time to get used to, but it's not awful. Um, Interceptor, Post Lockdown, Tireless Defender, Clamps, Hustler, Intimidator, Pick Dodger, Pogo Stick. So again, he's got a lot of good things going for him here. He really does. So, James Worthy is a player that I like. You just need to give the guy a lot of badges. You really, he, he needs a lot of badges. Um, so at number 50, starting off the top 50 is Opal Luka Doncic. If you are on next gen, this guy's really freaking good. Like, if you're on current gen, the guy sucks. So I think, I think I might be gassing and putting him in, in a 50. I genuinely, genuinely think I might be gassing him, putting him in here at 50. Because, um, he's terrible on one gen, but he's really nice on defense. Um, if you're on, if you're on either gen, his release is so bad on current gen, but it's almost uncontestably fast on next gen. Um, I like Luca. I think 50, maybe he's gassing it, but I'm going to put him in here at 50. And number 49 Oh, we don't have a 49. Or say we don't have DeRozan on this list. We got DeRozan here at 49. And I'm being dead serious when I said like 70 to 30. There's like nothing in it. There is like nothing in it, 70 to 30. And this is a prime example. I thought DeRozan was in around 70. But Opal DeRozan. Like my mind kind of was changing a lot on DeRozan. Like I initially, I think I had DeRozan in the 30s. And then he was in the 70s. Then he was in the 60s. And then I decided, uh, I'm not going to even put him on the list. Because I'm like... I don't like the card. Like I've, I have the card, and he's not been effective. But I think I put him on the list because if you go and badge him up, like if you give him range, if you give him chef, or say if you give him range, if you give him quick first step. With and you give him like interceptor, he's really good because he's got a decent three ball, but he's got a really really nice animations. And um, his perimeter defense is good. His driving dunk's brilliant. And if you can give him the correct badges, even on gold, 
the Rosen's really, really good. The problem is that without those correct badges, I'm not high on the guy. So, the Rosen's in here in the top 50 at number 49. But if you wanted to argue the Rosen's down the top 100, I mean, I can see that. But also, if you want to argue him at 30, that's fine. It's just he's so incomplete. He's so incomplete. He's got to give him a lot of badges. And honestly, as I say, he's probably going to be. It's looking like we're getting freaking Jokic's moment, next moment of the month. So it's looking like he's definitely going to be um, the best, the better of the two moments of the month, anyway. So after DeRozan, we got Bosch. Bosch is just a, a bog standard center at this stage in the game. And Bosch is fine. It comes with 43 uh, badges. He's got oh, most of the key shooting ones. His release isn't even that bad. His defense is solid. Rebound chaser, rim protector, interceptor. 79 steals, decent, 79 speed, 79 acceleration, 93 balls good. Post game is decent. And just overall, not a bad player. But but the, for me, this guy plays better than Bush. And I think it might sound crazy, but not Larry Bird. Birdman. Birdman. Chris Anderson. Like stats wise, badges wise, he's nowhere near as good. The guy can 24, 24 badges. But I just prefer Birdman. As you look at the badge, Birdman shoots better. I stand by, Birdman hits more shots than uh, Bosch. This is one of my favorite releases in the game. Defensively, Interceptor, Intimidator. They're very comparable on defense. I don't think anyone would argue that, but for me, like Birdman dunks the ball better. Birdman just seems to get these crazy rebounds that Bosch doesn't get, even when only gold rebound chaser. Again, this is one of those weird DBG type player over player, but I stand by Birdman, oh, one spot above Bosch. Then at number 46, we have got McAdoo. Diamond Bob McAdoo. So Bob McAdoo, again, half rebound chaser, worm, spectacular defense, absolutely spectacular defense, Eight, 92 speed for a center, 80s ball handle with fundamental dribble stop, and he can hit from the corners. Like this was a really good card when he came out. This was a really, really good card. Like, he came out January 11th, which was... It's hard to believe that was only 20 days ago. It is really hard to believe that was only 20 days ago. But he's, um... He's a player that I think is genuinely, genuinely good. Like, I've used him at the 4, I've used him at the 5. He's been brilliant at both of the positions. I think Bob McAdoo deserves his spot in here at number 46. At number 45, we have got Xavier McDaniel. Like, X-Man can shoot. X-Man can rebound. Um, X-Man's got, got great defense with half interceptor. It's just something about him. I, just, I think his movement isn't great. Um, or say, I think his like, ability to create isn't great. His defensive movement is good. And he's just kind of another one of those guys. For me, he's like a step below a Josh Smith. A Serge or like a Pascal Siakam. Like, all of those guys are basically the same card. And the reason why he's so low is that I just think there are so many guys who do the exact same thing as him, but um, are slightly better. So that's why he's so low. Even though you could definitely argue that he's better than Kevin Garnett, who we have. Especially at the powerful position, I'm taking Kevin Garnett over. Kevin Garnett's in here at number 44. I think he's still really effective. Like, he plays lanes at an okay rate. If you're good at playing lanes and you can get away with 69 steel, he's really good. I don't like his release. It's slow. It's not terrible, but it's slow. Everyone going mad about him getting set shot 14 last year. They reverted it back to the slow base 58. Um, his lateral's decent. He's just he's just evidently a card from October. Let's just say that much. He's evidently a card that came out in October, November. He's fine. Uh, he's completely fine. Then we got Scotty Pippen. I love Scotty Pippen. I think this guy here at number 43 it deserves it. He's 6,000 MT. 90 speed, perfect defensive stats. A good release, can play at the small forward position. Um, he's got half clamps defensively a menace off all pass target defender and if you're asking me like how do I prefer him to X-Man I don't know I think it might be the Scotty behind the back the Scotty behind the back for me is so effective because of the way I play because again I always say this is that whenever I get like I get flustered and I just start playing off muscle memory I have not played enough of outside like freaking stick fades from NBA 2K21 the start of that year I've not played enough 2K since 2K20 that my muscle memory does anything except Scotty behind the back into a deep hash room run. And like, that is honestly how I'm playing my, play a lot of my team. That's a lot of my offense is that deep hash room run. Um, and Scotty's perfect for that as well as his defense. So I personally think Scotty is 
way better than most people give him credit for. So I'm going to put Scotty Pippen in here at 43. Number 42, we got Antoine Jameson. He's fine. Like, again, I got Darius Miles in the, like... I'm pretty sure I have Darius Miles somewhere in the 70s or 60s. He's 66, and they're basically the same card. Like, Miles is just... Or James is slightly better. Jameson is just fine at everything. Low best base. He's just objectively just fine at everything. He's good enough, though. And we have DeAndre Ayton. DeAndre Ayton is in here at number... I just realized, again, like, I got... I don't have too long to go over these last 41 players. DeAndre Ayton, he's like mini D-Rob. Um, 77 lateral is not the greatest, but he just come with half interceptor. Good steal rating. Um, 90, 90 standing dunk. Decent three ball. Good um, release. Fundamental dribble style. Good big body of seven foot one. Overall, a solid, solid card. Um, and number 40, we got Isl. We got Isl that came out today. This card's good. This card's really, really good. I know a lot of people are kind of upset about this card because, well, he's just not Terry Dishinger from last year, or he's not Kazi Russell, but I think he is still good. Um, he's going to shoot the ball well. He plays really good defense. He gets in lanes, and he's not that small. He's a player that I'm I'm a fan of, and I know a lot of people don't like him. Then we got Baca. I think Baca's just poor man's AD. He really is. Like He's an Intimidator, Pogo, Post Lock, Rim Protector, Golden Deceptor, a really good release, 83 speed. Like, he is honestly just a poor man's version. Of it. He's not as good as Anthony Davis. Like, obviously not. But, like, he is just a poor man's AD. Like, if you compare him, AD's 121 better stats. Most of it's in post-game. In, like, um, speed of ball's a little better. AD's a little bit faster. Badges-wise, AD's quite a bit better. But, like, genuinely, I will say poor man's AD. The half-quick first step is a big one for AD. And then at number 38, we got Joe Johnson. And um, this card would be way higher if he didn't, again, if he had more than one lung. If he had a second lung. Like, that 84 stat, or 85 stamina is killer. Like, you really have to give him a plus 4 stamina shoe, and he still gets tired quick. Problem is that, like, if you want to run a 3-2 guard rotation, he might be just the top 3-2 guard in the game. Like, the only problem is, is that, again, his stamina is so bad, and he gets Gatorade symbol fast. You can't really create with him for too long. Like, even though he has handles for days, he's, he basically, his stamina is like he doesn't have handles for days. I'm sorry, Joe Johnson is... Joe Johnson should be better than, he, better than this, but 38 is the right spot for him. We got Hakeem. Hakeem Olajuwon. 85 speed, 85 acceleration, 85 lateral, 83 three ball. He's just all around good. He's good at everything. Big body. Plays well in the post. Do I advise you to lock him in at this stage? Hell no. But is he good? Yeah. Then we got Iguodala. Andre Iguodala Galaxy Opal. 93 ball, 95 speed, 95 acceleration, 97 lateral, 95 driving dunk. He's got half clams, half interceptor, half intimidator, half menace. Off ball pass, pick dodger, pick pocket, tireless defender, ankle braces, quick first step, downhill, clutch shooter. Again, just he's just an all around decent, uh, decent player on offense, but it's his defense where he's great. He can sh hit jumpers on offense, it's about what he can do. And if he dunks, he can dunk, but it's going to be hard to get to a dunk. But defensively, he's one of the best on the perimeter in the game. So Andre Guadal is brilliant. 36 is fine for him. Then we got Maurice Lucas. We got Maurice Lucas. And again, this slums up to him versus Paul Silas. I think Lucas is better than Paul Silas, but it's not by much in the 40 spots of the difference. He's got a 73 ball, but base 12 is really easy to agree with if he's from the corner. Scotty behind the back, shifty dribble style. Not the greatest ball handle, but again, it's over 70, so it's all good. He's got 11 half defensive badges, which is nuts. Um, or sorry, 13 half defensive badges. Half rebound chaser, good rebounding, great defense. And Maurice Lucas is one of the best centers in the game. And it's a pity that so many people didn't get him. Like, if you're doing beyond level 40, you'll probably go for Maurice Lucas. Then number 34, we got Rodman. We got Dennis Rodman a lot. So Dennis Rodman, is he worth his price? Hell no. But if he had a release that was not Seshaw 17, he'd be brilliant. Probably the best overall defensive player in the game. And 93 speed, 93 acceleration. And fundamental dribble style. The guy is just really good. Then number 33, we got Granger. I think he's fine. He's a cone, but he's a pretty damn good one. He plays good defense. His height, decent. He's he does nothing wrong. He's good and he's gonna shoot the ball really, really well. He's a cone, but he's a pretty good one. So yeah, he's in here at 33. And number 32, we get Diamond Josh Smith. I was surprised this guy was this low. I was actually really surprised. I thought he was gonna be top 20. Problem is, is that there's about 10 cards in the game that are the exact same as him. Like X X Man, LeBron James, Yana Santa de Compo, um, I listed them off yesterday. Siakam. Like, there are so many that like more that I can, there are more that I can't think of. Maurice Lucas. They all basically play the exact same play style, and they're it's all just preference based. And I think 
he's one of the weaker ones, but defensively immaculate. Shooting wise, he'll actually hit some shots. Um, he's got all the he's got a lot of great defensive badges, including Interceptor, Intimidator, Pogo. So again, like this is a card that I think is brilliant, and maybe I'm a bit low on this guy putting him in here at number 32. Number 31, we got Siakam. Basically the same card, but slightly better. He's got more half badges, he's got range extender, and he shoots the ball a tiny bit better, I guess, than um than Josh Smith. But there's almost nothing in the only between these two. Like in game they play very, very similar. Whereas jo and Josh Smith's a much better dunker than Siakam. But um yeah, give me Siakam. See, I can the slight edge, but it's very close. Then after that, I'm putting Ja. I think Ja is really good. I think Ja's movement is good. He's stupidly overpriced, but like I think Ja's movement's good. He's got the good behind the back. He's got a 94 three-pointer. He's got limitless spot of catch and shoot, mismatch extra sniper, 94 lateral, half clamps, gold interceptor. So like again, he's he's as good as you're gonna get for a six three-point guard. He's near perfect for that. He's really good. But better than John Morant from that same set is Bob Sura. Bob Sura, 6'5", long wingspan, good speed, pretty decent defense, actually good interior. He's at everything except range extender. 88 three ball, a brilliant release, shifty dribble style. Uh, defensively, again, he's just more than solid. So Sura, yeah, I think Sura belongs right in here at number 29. Number 28, we got a bunch of point guards in a row, by the way, here. We got Penny Hardaway. If Penny suits you, Penny might still be the number one point guard in the game for some of you guys. Like, again, stats-wise, he doesn't look the greatest, but he's got really good animations, and he's 6'7". So Penny Hardaway, if you need that tall point guard, is that dude. Then we get Gary Payton, Pink Diamond. And again, this is a really close one, because I'm like, Payton's 27. Wall was like 70. There's not that much of a difference. Like, of the top 100, all, like Kyrie was 100. Pretty much every card, every card in this top 100 is usable. Every card in this top 100 is usable, like. But um, Peyton is really nice, really good defender. Seven half badges, um, all defensive. His defense is spectacular. His shooting's pretty good, and overall, it's a good, good card. Not the greatest dunker though. And the di big difference is that dunking between him and Jeremy Lin. I think Jeremy Lin is better. Jeremy Lin is very similar to Peyton, except he's a tiny bit shorter. He's one inch shorter, but he shoots the ball quite a bit better and dunks the ball a hell of a lot better. Um, I just think he's a more complete, ver he's a more complete, like he comes with 61 badges off rip, whereas Peyton comes with like 32, he comes with like 47 and 15 in my silver, whereas he got 61 gold or half badges on Jeremy Lin. I think Jeremy Lin is that little bit better, because again, if you guys don't know, they both come with the same dribble style, they both come with the same jump shot with a different upper, I do prefer Jeremy Lin's, and they both come with Scotty behind the back, so I think Lin is that bit better, but I don't think it's, I think it's close enough. And then we got Wade Pink Diamond. I think Wade Pink Diamond is really good. I just think defensively, he's just another level. I think it doesn't matter what his interior defense says. He's going to block a ridiculous amount of shots. His animations are great. Um, Wade, just a really, really good card. Then after Wade, we got Pink Diamond, Kevin Durant. I still think Pink Diamond, Kevin Durant's good. The moment's good. You're not going to play the guy at the four. But defensively, he can more than hold his own. And offensively, he's, still, he's not that much worse than the Dark Matter. He's worse on offense, but not that much worse. He's a, he's a much worse player because the Dark Matter plays way better defense, but I mean, overall, I think he's pretty good. Then at number 23, we got Larry Hughes. So Larry Hughes is a decent shooter, but a spectacular defender. So he moves quite well, shifty dribble style. He'll hit shots when he's wide open, but his defense is immaculate. Like half clamps, half interceptor, uh, menace pick dodger. His defensive stats are brilliant. Um, great interior, good block. The fact that this guy can play point guard is crazy. And I do think he's a slight bit ahead of those other point guards. And one spot ahead. Diamond Clay. Diamond Clay? I, st I have yet... I'm sorry, I do not notice the difference between Diamond and Opal Clay. I've used Diamond Clay a ton. I've used Opal Clay a ton. I do not notice the difference. I still think Diamond Clay is brilliant. I think if at his price, like if he drops to around like 15k, I'll just buy him. I'll just buy him. I need a two guard. I need a new two guard. I'll just buy him. Number 21. This guy might be number one in the game if he suits, if you like using it. Yao. Because Yao is either brilliant or terrible, depending on how you play. The guy only comes with 35 badges, but he's 7'6 with a 7'9 wingspan. As well as that, he's got um, an 83 steal with Interceptor on gold. He's got a bunch of defensive badges Hall of Fame and a bunch of finishing badges Hall of Fame. 
He's not going to be a great shooter, but I mean, if he's wide open in the corner, he's still going to hit most of the time. Um, he's just he's just a good card. It's just he doesn't suit a lot of people's play style because he's slow. But I mean, if you suits the way you play the game, Yao Ming well and truly does belong in well higher than number twenty one. Number twenty, we got Odom. Now this guy, man, I I'm such a big fan of this card here. So Lamar Odom, six ten, six eleven wingspan. He shouldn't be better than Paul George, but for me, he's way better. I'm just putting it out there like he shouldn't be better. Half quick first step makes him move so fast out of that Paul George burst. Goal interceptor. I really like that release on the left on a lefty. Um, I don't know why he's so much better than Paul George, but for me, he just is. And number 19, we got Lamelo. Lamelo plays lanes at an elite rate. Lamelo shoots the ball at um at an elite rate. He just can't really move, which is weird because Lamelo ball should be like shifty. He's just not really. He's behind the back in the graves, but he is probably the best moving of any slasher dribble style player in the game because just these running animations. His speed is kind of low. He's basically just a better version of the Shea Gills Alexander card that's coming from my team limited. Then we get D-Rob. I mean, David Robinson is still number 18 best player in the game despite the fact he came out on the 5th of November. Um, he does everything well. It's just there are better cards in the game. He's big, he's strong, he'll get rebounds. He will shoot the ball well. There's no flaws, there are really no flaws with them. Um, with him and number 17 we got opal clay like opal clay is a bit better i don't think he's that much better i really don't like the 38 half badge clay that someone bought maybe maybe the 38 half badge clay but i don't think he's i don't think he's uh anything spectacular in comparison to the diamond um But he's still brilliant. Like he's still 17. And like it's a weird one because the diamond I was hyping up the diamond and not hyping up this card. It's just that he's not enough of a difference maker to put him above 17. Then at number 16, we got Kobe. I think Kobe's better than Kobe's a better two guard than Clay Thompson. Like 10 half badges. Yeah, he didn't get half range. We just get him in gold. I think Kobe's movement is really good. Kobe's release, I think, is better. Um 86 steel is really good again. A really solid defender. And Kobe Bryant, one of the best two guys in the game. He's the best Kobe we've seen in like, I didn't like any Kobe's last year. Um, I'm trying to think the last time we saw a really good Kobe in my team. Probably like 2K... 19, 2K18 is probably even the best Kobe we've seen since then. And number 15, we got Rudy Gay. So like Rudy Gay, again, the guy shoots the ball at a really good rate. He's at his own release on normal, quick dribble style, great behind the back, really solid on defense. You're probably gonna play him with a three. Only problem is the guy doesn't get range. So if he got range, he'd be even higher than 15. He, that's where he's going. At number 14, we got Opal Anthony Davis. So AD, again, like, without, he's got gold interceptor, but he's going to play lanes really well. Good speed, half quick first step. Good lateral quickness, good steal. If you want to run with the four, you can. If you want to run with the five, you can. The guy doesn't really have any flaws. A really good player in game. And Anthony Davis is going to be um, 14. Number 13, we got Yanis, 75th edition, 75th anniversary Yanis. So, fully badged up, he's very, very similar to um, the other Yanis. Like, really good stats. So this one here, you can give the guy sniper, you can give him corner specialist, catch and shoot, chef, you can give him all these badges if you need to. He already comes with every defense badge, at least on gold. And yeah, he's in here at number 13. At number 12, we're gonna go Opal Yanis. 76 30 ball the difference is that like he comes with corner specials you don't need to add it he's more complete problem is you can't re you can't add chef to well obviously not really gonna need chef but you can't add say dead eye sniper um these type of badges they are good badges but he is slightly better i still think he's slightly better in most scenarios in the pink diamond but it's very close and he's only one the difference at number 10 we're gonna go with lebron james so lebron james Really solid release, great defense. He got half intercept here. Um, I just don't think he moves with the ball in his hand. Like you can't create at all with LeBron. He, his offense is wide open three point shots, playing lanes and dunking, which is still um and dunking on the break, which is still a really decent way to play offense. Is a reason why he's number twelve on the list. But like, there's not that much to differentiate LeBron James and Josh Smith. So um, that's why he's sorry. That's why he's at number eleven. Number ten, controversial, Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum, I think his release is so good. 107 on quick is so good. So much better than that terrible release he has in his pink diamond. 94 three ball, 92 speed, 92 acceleration, 94 lateral quickness. 
Sniper, Limitless. You got Clamps, Interceptor. Defense will be spectacular. As a small forward, don't play a power forward, but as a small forward, I get it for some reason. I don't understand why his wingspan's smaller. They, sh they shorten his wingspan, but it doesn't matter. The guy is spectacular. He belongs in here at number 10. At number 9, we got Terry. Terry Freak Conditioner. Like, he doesn't get range. And a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, he's not going to be great because he doesn't have range. Like, no, no. Trust me, Terry's that dude. I think I might be undershooting Terry, putting him at number 9. His jumper is so nice. Rudy Gay on quick. Uh, Scotty behind the back. His dunk is unbelievable. His three pointer is nice. You can, you can give him Chef anyway. Great speed, great defense. Oh, I'm telling you, lads, Terry's, Terry's insane. Then we've got the player I still have nightmares about. Number nine, or number eight, sorry. Um, Kazi. So yeah, you gotta give Kazi Chef and you gotta give Kazi Limitless spot. But you give Kazi those two badges, even on goals. He's, he's a nightmare. 93 ball, base three on quick. Quick dribble style. Like, his defense is really good as well. Like, his defense is spectacular. I'm oh, sorry, Kazi freaking Russell. Like, every, I've been cooked by him too many times to not put him here. Am I good with Kazi? No, I've been cooked, but I've been cooked by him too many times. Like, there is no player I fear more than Kazi Russell. I don't care who it is. I play against everybody. I play against every card in this game. The only player that I actually fear is Kazi Russell. Oh, and all of my team, so. Yeah, he's got to be in here at number eight. At number seven, we've got Embiid. One of the new um, one of the new big men that came out. Galaxy Open Embiid. So for me, he's the number two center in the game. Um, He's got grace under pressure, post spin technician on half. But he also comes like half corner specials. A really nice release. Really good defensive stats and half interceptor. Intimidator, pogo, post move locked in, rim protection, tires, defender. Really good shooting. Um, terrible shot IQ and intangibles, which means that he's actually going to be a really good card. Nice player build. Like for me, he's a way better, he's like a way better D-Rob. That's probably the best way to describe um, Joel Embiid. At number six, we got Reggie Lewis. Now, Reggie Lewis is so good. Like half interceptor, clamps, intimidator, menace, pickpocket, pogo. Like, he he needs he needs chef, corn specialist, yeah. But like almost everything else he has. Like maybe you want to give him brick wall or something or post move lockdown. But he's got great interior, great steel, great block, great perimeter defense, great driving dunk. He's got a brilliant release as well. Shifty dribble style. Best buy in the back of the game and is going to dunk it on everybody. I'm telling you, lads. Reggie Lewis is so good. The fact that I have him at six. I have Reggie Lewis at six. There are just, there is just one guy that I think in a lot of scenarios is going to be more effective than Reggie Lewis at that two guard position. And then the rest of the guys hired him. I just cards have come out since him. But this is a controversial one. Kawhi. Kawhi. I don't think he moves that well. Even with his own dribble style, it's like fundamental. His behind the back is good. His release is brilliant. He's just, he's just the perfect cone at the two. So he, you play him alongside like a Clay or a Reggie Lewis or a Kazi. He guards the other team's best player. He's the player I hate guarding me the most. He's not. I mean, defensively, he's the best. He's not quite Reggie Lewis on offense, but. It's a, in a really close one. I'm going for giving the tiniest, tiniest edge to Kawhi Leonard. Like, if I was making this list yesterday, I'd probably go to Reggie Lewis, number five, and Kawhi at six. But I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just have a, have a good feeling that Kawhi is that slightly better. And number four, again, from here on out, we're going positions. So Kawhi is Kawhi is our um, two guard. Then number four is the point guard. Like my top five is the top five each position. It's Gary Payton. Gary Payton, he's just slightly better. Like his dunking's good, his laterals unbelievable, his steel is unbelievable, defensively immaculate, can hit jump shots. He doesn't come with range, but you can give it to him. He comes with or 12 or 11, sorry, half defense by his half quick first step. Look about floor general downhill. He's got he's got decent player build. Can also guard inside a little bit with his 84 ladder or interior, 90 block, and again, like the guy comes with half ball stripper, so he's gonna be as good defending the switch as anyone 20 half badges he's not that much better trust me he's not like streets ahead of the likes of larry hughes like even a jeremy lynn he's not streets ahead of but i think he's the best point guy in the game so i want to put one per position for the top five so if you're wondering why i've got it like it is but um yeah he's gonna go in here as my number one point guy number four and number three my number one center Kristaps. 
Chris Aspor is in my opinion, the best center in my team. I think he's that little bit better than um, Embiid. I think his release is a bit faster. Stats-wise, he's not as good. Uh, he does come with half range though, which is kind of which is kind of big. Um, whereas Embiid comes with no range. But like, he also comes with half an acceptor. The difference is, dude's seven three. Like the guy is seven foot freaking thirty. So um, Brook Lopez base fundamental dribble stop. It's just he's taller. He's just a lot taller. He blocks shots a bit better. Strength's not as good, but I mean, I think he's just that little bit better than Embiid. So that's why I have him in here at number three. And number two, we've got, in my opinion, the best power forward in the game, Karolenko. The fact that two pink diamond cards that came out of the Beast, three pink diamond cards of the Beast are all in the top 20. Um, speed, acceleration, again, really, really good um, at 88. Or sorry, really, really thought at 88, but like, look at the defense, man. He's like, imagine if Rodman didn't have a bum release. Imagine if Rodman didn't have a bum release. And actually, in fact, I want a better release in the game. That's basically what you're getting here. You're getting a, you're getting a taller Dennis Rodman without a bum release. So, yeah, number two. As the number one power forward, I prefer... Like, if you want to... The crazy thing is, like, if you want to argue at the four, if you want to argue Giannis, LeBron, or AD, if you want to argue any of those are right, that's fine. I prefer AK. Okay. And number one, the best small forward in the game. And I actually think that for most people, this is going to be the best card in the game. As in... People of any skill level can use this card. I think for the this guy is for the majority of people, if they have this card, will be the best card in the game. Kevin Durant. It's Kevin Durant Galaxy Opal. So what Kevin Durant Galaxy Opal has is he shoots from deep. He's got a grand total of 60 badges. All gold or all gold or half. Um he's at 94 lateral, he's at 89 steel, he's got gold interceptor, half clamps, half intimidator, half menace. So he's got half quick change, so his dribbling is going to feel even nicer. Um, he's got half chef, clutch shooter, limitless spot up. He's got the behind the back, which just lets you blow by people. Shifty dribble stop. Kevin Durant release, which is not terrible. Great three point shot, great driving dunk. Like, in terms of in a competitive standpoint, from a competitive standpoint, I, if you want to argue KD is not number one, that's fine. But for me, I think that when everything's taken into account, Kevin Durant has to be number one. I think he just has to be number one because whether you are someone who picked up the game today, or whether you are someone who is in the top 100 players in the world, Kevin Durant's probably in your best team. Whereas certain guys, like it's going to be a struggle for some people to shoot with Giannis. Most people aren't going to be able to move with LeBron at all. Um, I think the guy, Kevin Durant's literally just training wheels. No matter what. He plays defense, he plays offense. He does everything. May not be the greatest player in a competitive sense, but I'm telling you, I think for most people, he's going to be number one. So yeah, that is pretty much it, lads. That is the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.